hi guys good morning welcome to my channel um, my name is Emily and I'm welcoming quite a few new subscribers this week so thank you very much if you found me um, and come to watch my stitching this is a uh, I just already said I, I mostly cross stitch I have my I have my knitting which is allowed within the rules on account that it's cross stitch but it's not as we all know now anyway Good morning. My coffee's very hot. It's very early. It's half past eight in the morning and I've been faffing around for ages. You can see this bright sunlight coming in the window. I've tried to cobble together so that I can actually, I'm not dark and dingy if I were sitting on my sofa, which is just over there. So I'm in the other far corner with the window and <laughs> it's all a bit, it's all a bit strange. I've had to put a piece of mount board behind me. There's a fish tank there. So rather than loads of pretty fish, I've put the piece of mount board behind because it was, I had this really strange dark strip. Anyway, welcome. Sunday morning, early as. Mm. Life update of this week is it's Sunday and not Thursday or Friday because life is ramping. I, from tomorrow, I hit the ground running. So this will be my last week of a lot of stitching I think for a while but that is life and I've had a year now of just being at home mostly you know I have I've been working not throughout but I've been working back since about May last year but not much but now to, from tomorrow I will be working for some of every day it's not going to be it's not going to be like 12 hour shift every day but it will be some hours every day I'm not going to have these days where I can just chillax at home and do tons of stitching so I hope everybody had a good Easter I did put a little video I put quite a long video but I put a video up on on Sunday of my Easter start and I must show you her straight away my Celtic lady my Celtic summer um, I actually managed last week to put pictures up on Instagram, which I don't often manage to do as much as I should, I think. Um, so, my Celtic Summer. And my first comment is this little picture that comes on the pattern does not do it justice. It just doesn't do it justice. So if I bring you up close there, you can see what she's going to look like. Except she looks like this. Look at her hair. Isn't she wonderful? OK, so on the stitch with me, I started up here and started putting in the borders here. And I wanted to get this S done on the Sunday. Basically, this is Sunday and a little bit of Monday. I haven't worked on her since because I've been working on other things. But that's how much I got done. I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop. Once I started in the hair and that is just DMC. That effect is done with shading. Isn't it just brilliant? Isn't it brilliant? Now, I hummed and hard, and in the end, I did do her skin over one. So those are 28 count stitches. But, because I've now got the confidence to do that. If I'd have started this, if I'd have done her when I first wanted to do them a year or more ago. I would have never had the guts to do over one stitching on 28. It's doable. They are tiny. I tried so hard to get them really neat. And I think the stitches are not too bad. But there she is. And there's Eric sharpening his claws on one chair. So, oh, she's washing just a little bit. There we go. So this is on this big piece of 28 count. He's going to be a pain, I think, today. He's in his pesty, pesty point. So I did put her right up in that top corner because she's going to fit more than... because this bottom bit's very, very colourful motley. So she's going to sit there on the fabric, which I think is going to be just nice. I'm going to have the darker colours sitting behind her and lighter in front. Are you coming to say good morning, Eric? Come on. Here's my pussy cat. Come here. He's giving me the funniest look. Here he is. Say hello. He's giving me a very funny look this morning because I'm sitting somewhere I never sit. Here's Eric. Morning. Just walk across my cross stitch, buddy. Why not? 
Okay, there's Eric. He's probably, hopefully he won't knock too much over. He's in that kitteny, playful mood. We'll see. What did I pick up next? Um, right, I can't remember, so I'm just going to show you what I've done this week. Um, ladies first? Ladies first. Okay, here is my tiny modernist stitching goddess this is the first the first one on the pattern and this is this is the ginger head lady and i've put in quite a bit actually i've done i've brought the dress oh that just flopped down my arm i brought the dress all the way down did a little bit more fill in here and i've done these flowers i filled in a bit of this flower I've done the cotton reel and the ass end of the squirrel is done there now. So I am so happy with her. The fabric is showing blue, which is nice. It shows purple upstairs. There we go. So I dyed this one as well. And I've got enough fabric to do the pair. So I'll do, I will do both of the ladies and then we'll frame them side by side. I haven't thought I'm going to have to pause and scramble in a minute. First thing I was going to show you, I haven't I haven't shown you. So I put in a bit of progress on her, my stitching goddess. And then the other lady that I picked up to do a bit of is woo, my first Nora Corbett, because I am thinking very hard about getting another Nora Corbett. Um, where's the little picture she comes with? Sorry. Yes, I want to do spring clover. Here she is. So because I'm already doing gardenia, I thought I'd finish off gardenia first. So that's what she's going to look like. I like I love the way she's standing. I love the sidewaysy lady and the the charm. The charm did it for me. And I bought um, from Arts and Designs cross stitch, which is actually just up the road from me. Not that I can go and see her. Them. Um, I got the charm pack as well. There's their arts and designs. Absolutely brilliant. Post next day. Um, there's a absolutely beautiful iridescent treasure. It's like a lily she's holding. That sold it to me because I really like that. So I got the little pack. And these little packs of everything you need. There's three packs of treasures and three packs of beads. I think that was about six pounds. So it's actually cheaper than buying it's cheaper than buying it all individually to get the little packs so if you can get the little charm packs with all the little bits and pieces it's worth doing um spring clover i have a piece of um it was it was blush blush laguna it is 32 count but i'm just gonna wing it um that i splotched purple when i did did my first batch of dyeing so that's what spring clover is going to go on um i have been using it to photograph everything for etsy so that piece of fabric that i need to stop faffing with that um that piece of fabric will be immortalized in my etsy pictures i'm getting there with etsy hold tight um and here's the piece of fabric the enormous piece of fabric that i am stitching gardenia on um it was the green it was green and i laid green on it but the green broke when i dyed so it's actually a speckle and i was trying to get it light in the middle and speckly around the edges so that she would stand in the lighter spot which she kind of does but of course her skirt covers that but these colors here are the most likely to get lost and i don't think they do i think we can clearly see her that's the bot that's the very bottom of her skirt and that is just in her bodice where it suddenly goes much darker so this this color here is all done and i'm just working on this the next color there to go up up to there and then i can get on with a bit more but that's that's fully stitched i started this and a whole load of other little smalls in the it's not fully stitched there's holes for beads um in the last 24 hours of cross stitch i started five i think little two nora corbett's two jardin privés and something else that I can't... Oh, it's here. I started five things. So, there's that. 
So I did, I put a few stitches into her because I want to start Spring Clover and I really need to not just start everything. I, I, I have started everything, but you know what I mean? I need to get on with the ones that I've already got, which I absolutely love and want finished. I need to get on with them so that at least there's, there's progress happening. There's got, there's progress happening. Right. I'll show you this one next because I'm thinking about it. This is another one that I started in 24 hours of cross stitch, which is the Emma Congdon that I took from the magazine, dum, 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 cross stitcher magazine in February. You are all kinds of amazing. I absolutely love this. This is my first Emma Congdon. It will definitely, it will definitely, definitely not be my last Emma Congdon. But, so I thought, right, I want to start something in that book. So, I thought I'd better put a few more stitches into this. This is quite pale behind, actually. Let's use the book. And hold it up. There. So, this is a piece of 32 Count Laguna that I also dyed <clears throat> myself with all kinds of navy blue to try and get it as dark as I could. There we go. So, I've done quite a bit on this from the last time... I put in these leaves, I put in this, I did the oil and the your you are, and I started on the very top flower. I want to get right to the top and then I can put in the snakes at the top and then I can just get on with it. I want that done as well. This is one of my to be finished in May. It's slightly more muted in in real life in my hands. The colours are, are a bit more, yeah, a bit more like that. They look really bright and poppy there. They're a little bit more muted and the colours for this I'm just pulling from my anchor stash that I got at auction. So I'm using up somebody else's, somebody else's rescued threads. There we go. The auction's back on. I might tootle along tomorrow and have a little look. There's three batches of, they call it needlework accessories. It might be, I've got, we have the tailoring stuff. We sometimes get a cross stitch lot. I'm going to have to go and see if I want to bid on anything. I'm really looking forward to live auctions coming back because then at least I can send Robin in with a clear bid on this item and bid this much for it and then he can actually bid live. You know, I'm hoping June, when the country reopens fully on June the 21st, I'm hoping that the live auctions will be back. That would be amazing. Amazing for me, maybe not so amazing for Robin because he can't resist stuff. And my house is bulging with stuff. So, yeah. Anyway, going to show you my haul. I saw this up on, actually, um, Stitch Rovia. She actually put, I, I saw her Instagram post and went straight to the Amazon because I can't get to proper bookshops and everywhere else wouldn't have delivered 12 hours later. And I bought it from the Amazon. And it is, I... <laughs> My favourite is this one. I'm just trying to think what I can change change the words to so that I can stitch what's on the front. The patterns in here are amazing. They are amazing. And I know this book's not been released in the US yet, but it's not long. It's in the UK, not long to be released in the US. And I've got my daughters to look at it and pick out ones that they like. I will be stitching. Ooh, uh, let me hold this so it doesn't make you vomit. I'll be stitching this one. I'll be stitching this one. I'm going to stitch this one for my auntie. I'm going to stitch um, either this one or where's the other one? P possibly this one for my sister or maybe this one because she and then my other daughter quite likes this one. And my middle girl likes this one as well. I like that one. It's just so many of them. I can't think of many of them that I don't really want to stitch. I really do like all of them. Possibly not this one, but not for me. But then it might be a lovely gift. I think these will make fantastic gifts because they're modern. You know, for the for cross stitchers, for, for people who don't really get cross stitch, these are wonderful gifts because they look like the lovely life affirming quotes that you can buy except it's hand done and as I, as I think to myself I get the joy because I'm a process stitcher I get the joy from stitching it and then when it's finished I can give it 
and I've still got the pattern so if I ever wanted again I can stitch it again for me but I'm really looking forward to that so I'm on eyes out for Ada now I think these I think these these guys I think these Emma Congdon's really really lend themselves to Ada because they want to be sharp and crisp and I'm on the lookout for, for I think I think probably 18 will be will be a really lovely compromise so two strands so the colour was really bold and really pops you see this on 32 count I'm only using one strand and the coverage is okay but two strands was a squeeze I was going to do it two strands but two strands was a squeeze because I've it got dyed I think four or five times so I think it's probably not 32 count I think it's probably 30 probably nearer 34 count now um, so one strand for that two strands was just too was just too bubbly you know the stitch was making a bubble rather than a neat cross and I've said before I like my neat I like my neat crosses I really do to which end I will show you shooting star I picked this up this is one of only two bits I, I, this is really the only full coverage I've done this week I put a good dollop in two let me find out which way up I am into shooting star caroling manning designs you go to our website their PDFs are there there and you can start them straight away they're straight DMC this is on 20 count Ada I'm using one strand and that's what I mean about being able to see the tiny crosses because that is beautiful. This is probably my neatest piece. I have hit the halfway mark. I am over, I am just over 50%. So even though I've not quite finished, 50 obviously would be straight down the middle of this central. I haven't done that one yet, but I've done other bits and I did all the red on the bingo. I stitched all the red stitches for the bingo prompt in uh, February, was it? No, oh, January. January was bingo. So I stitched all the red for bingo. But there it is. And I'm halfway. And I kind of sometimes forget about this one as a full coverage. But I really, really love it. And I keep seeing I keep seeing the granny squares. You know, we're Carolyn Manning, the granny squares ones. And I've already bought one of those. So I really want, I think with Carolyn Manning, I need to be one in, one out. I don't think I can have four, five, six of them on the go at once because because of the way they're stitched and they're, it's almost therapeutic to stitch on that. They're so neat this because you can, because you're stitching a block, a small block or a small triangle, your stitches can be perfect. You know, there's no one here, there's no conf confetti, there's no confetti, obviously, the way, the way that they're laid out. They're just marvellous. So that was really the only full coverage I put a lot into. I have brought down my Bountiful bookshelf just because I love showing it. Um, ta -da. There we go. Let's see if I can get the light on that nicely. There we are. And I've just put, I filled in some here. This is going to be, this week I'm going to try and get a good dollop of stitches into this because I'm falling behind on the bookshelf challenge by quite a long shot. The next challenge is out for eight for May and it's a Wheel of Fortune. So you get loads of words and you need to stitch the number of stitches per letter to finish the words. So I'm going to obviously I'm going to take part. You can stitch 50 stitches a letter, 20, 250 stitches a letter or 500 stitches a letter. Now last time I did 250 stitches a letter. This time realistically because I like to finish the challenges. Realistically, I think I'm going 50. I want to do 250, but I just don't think I'm going to have the time. So I think, well, I either go for a couple of words with a higher number, or I go for the full lot, which is much more my style, but with much, much lower stitch count. So I think that's what I'm probably going to do. Okay. So all that's left is to show you my long dogs, of which I have one, two, three, four, I have five to show you. And yes, I have a new start, but I'll show you my progress first. Um, I picked up Pandemic yesterday, J 
just because I realised I hadn't worked on it for so long. And oh my goodness, it looks beautiful down here. Um, I'm currently fighting here and there's a huge mistake. But um, sorry about that. Um, I picked up here and I filled in I filled in this bit here just to be somewhere completely different. My thread's very purple at the moment rather than the very green bit there that I started with. I haven't come across another green bit like that yet. Um, I'm not colour controlling this at all. I'm just stitching it as the strands pull out. So there's my pandemic. I'm now at I think 10 and 10.4 percent. So I've done a 0.4. But to get 1% on pandemic, you have to put in 776 stitches to do 1%. So to say, oh, I'm going to do 10% a week's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen because that's, you know, 7,000 stitches in pandemic, which I might do 7,000 stitches in the week, but not all in the one piece. Right. The next one I worked on, I picked up Anzac and it's been a long, long time since I've stitched on Anzac. This is one of the ones that I'm going to try and punt to finish in May. I really think I'm going to have a really good go at getting Anzac finished, partly because it is quite finished. So I am at 62%, I think. It's actually a little bit more because all the bit that's really, really wrong is not marked off anymore. I, I, I marked it as frogged, you know, I frogged it out on Pattern Keeper. So it's actually just a little bit more. But can you see my Australia bubble is joined up? I haven't quite finished the pelican in the top hat. The pelican here. Ugh, right, how am I going to hold this? So... There's the pelican in the top hat. He is joined up. Can you see? Look, I've frogged. <laughs> Can you see my little bit of frogged? I'm not wasting a scrap of this. Because um, I had already stitched his bottom in the blue when I was stitching over here. And I hadn't realised I'd done it. So when I got to him this way, he had to be green because he's on the outside touching. And anything on the outside touching... Anything on the outside is green and anything on the inside is blue, apart from odd little bits like where's the horse's, the horse's fiery vomit here. I did that blue just because it needed to stand out. So what did I do? I did a monumental merino and there he is. And I hope you can see he is spotty. Now... <laughs> I didn't, because this is a dinky dye, down under blues, my most favourite blue. Um, this navy blue and this green. The greeny blue is blue grouper and this is down under blues. And look at that little bunny. What I did, I finished Australia. There was, I was, I had about that much. So I finished off this bit here. I did all of this bottom bit here. Finished off Ned. Uh, Ned's, Ned was only touting one gun. So he's got his second gun now. I did all of this bit. And I did the pelican. So this is all, there is conservatively about 900 stitches in this great big merino, this, this king of all merinos holding up Australia. Um, and I did put up a series of pictures on Instagram and I will insert them because I stitched him. I, my kangaroos, I'm sorry, my words are all a bit jumbled. My kangaroos are very stripy because it, it, it doesn't look very variegated, but when you stitch with it, especially with the one strand, you do get quite a variegation. So I didn't want a stripy sheep, I wanted a curly sheep. So I stitched him curly and I so nearly left him spotty. I hummed and hard and hummed and hard, but because of the, because of the dense pattern of Australia, I filled him in and it, did almost break my heart to fill him in so there's my merino sheet but can you see he's spotty right I'll show you here I'll just insert a couple of pictures to show you the process of making my, my sheep spotty so the first thing I did was stitch his full outline so that I could fill him in with spots and then I stitched round each spot until it all met up so that you can still see his spots are there and I very nearly left him like that but <laughs> I couldn't. He needed he needed to be filled in. So, all in at the minute, I'm riding at 
so I'm going to come down next my next job is to bring this down and come across there's some sailing boats here and a great big white great white shark I think sitting about there I don't think he's over there I think he's over here and there's a um, duckbill platypus there I think so I need to come down and then go that way because the big 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 mistake big huge might this might all absolutely have to come out this bit here the magpie with the with the lizard in his mouth and the crocodile and this very top bit here is massively out we're not talking a stitch we're talking five four stitches up two stitches across kind of out i'm going to see if i can stitch around it because i'm going down and i'm going that way and i'm going to come up to meet it if i can fudge it into the crocodile i will if i can't the crocodile is coming out for the third time i have already frogged and restitched him twice and he is still wrong so there is a massive mistake that i've it's not a massive mistake it is lots of little mistakes that have compounded to make everything very out which yeah i knew i'd done i knew it happened what i do know is this bit's all right these here they're right the mistake is literally this crocodile he is wrong and i think there's i think there's a counting error here which came down to meet counting errors here so he's sort of like that when i get to it i will i will make it so i'm happy with it and that's all we can say right two more long dogs first one is my tiny long dog count your blessings which wasn't meant to be tiny but is tiny um this is 28 count laguna in torp which is boring and it was going to have a colourful long dog on it that filled the fat quarter, but it doesn't because it's tiny. Here we are, that's where I am with it, and I'm absolutely loving this, this tiny little over one long dog. I've done quite a few flowers here and I've put some flowers in here. So I've done I've done a little bit more. This is one I'm just, just tootling with. Every now and again, I'll just put a few strands in. As you can see, I've I've secured it into its Q-snap. It is rolled up and pinned and has Fimo on the back. Yuck. Anyway, <laughs> never mind. So my good idea to use up this big piece of taut fabric now is only a quarter of the big piece of taut fabric will get used. But that is Count Your Blessings and that's just the side. And I am I sorted myself out a colour palette which I'm using and they're mostly old anchors a couple of DMC's just to get the, the right shade that I was looking for and I'm making it up as I go along and I'll be changing up the pattern as well when I get to it I'll show you what, as I get to it and then Friday happened and on Friday Jules released two more patterns um, one they're both quite small on, on the plus side they're both quite small um, the one that I chose instantly, sitting at work, dictating to my manager, she, we were writing procedures out, and I was dictating to her with one, and then with one hand I was buying a long dog <laughs> with the other. Oh dear. Um, it's about the same size as Sansui. So as monochromatic long dogs go, it is a small one. There's a lot of stitching in it though. It's very, it's a very dense stitched one. And I chose opening gambit. That is a very, very good representation of its colour. Now I had this piece of fabric that Jennifer sent me. It is Bestitch Me Cobbler and it is opalescent. And it is a big, beautiful piece of this very magenta -y turquoise. Uh, magenta -y purple it's not turquoise at all and that's where I've got to I've got two monkeys and the start of uh, a housey castle it's called opening gambit and I hummed and hard for quite a while and because the fabric is so fantastic I thought for the first time ever I would do a monochromatic 
long dog in a solid DMC and I was going to do all I, I was actually looking I can show you the exact colour because it's I took it out of this pack I was looking at this green this bright bright green and I very nearly did it in that and then I just pulled myself back a little bit and said hang on a minute the colours there and the colours here are very similar so I thought it needs to look because they are all going I don't have a load of wall space most of my wall space is in my living room and up the stairs so eventually you know at the end of time these will all hang together alongside each other you know close by and they kind of need to tone together I don't want one that takes your eye out as being really glaring differently these really big the big pieces I mean the little pieces I can do whatever with because they'll be all over the place so I went for 3808 which is a green teal it's not a blue teal it's a green teal it's greener than it's showing there but there is my little start that is three percent maybe two and just under three percent of opening gambit and because they're small patterns they're not expensive so if you're looking for a long dog and you haven't done one and you go on the website and some of them are 21 pounds and you think wow that's a lot of money for a pattern it's actually not a lot of money because you've got years you get years to do these you know that it's for the for the time it takes to stitch one like say take pandemic that's i know most of us got it as a free download but it's 21 maybe i haven't actually because if i've bought it i tend not to go back and look at them again because i've already i go done it got it got it got it got it oh i haven't got that one yet you know and i have a look at the ones i haven't got it's going to take me seven eight years maybe to stitch pandemic so spread out over that time it's fine it's like buying a hade so anyway I don't mind anyway this was only this was not this was 14 I think so that's really good and I'm and I've started it and I'm rattling on with it this is a 32 count Laguna right up my street right up my street this piece of fabric absolutely lovely motley sparkly with a flat color on it that really pops I did I did start it and then looked at the fabric that way round and that's the less motley side turned it round and that's the that's the more motley side so I restart I'd only done I'd only done a few stitches so I restarted it on the more motley side because the more motley the better for something like that which just leaves me with my knitting here is my knitting what I'm going to do is pin this onto my pin it out on my sofa and I'll take a little video of it because it's actually quite hard to show because it's very long and it's quite curly and I've started and I've I've broken the rules look I am mid I've started a row I've actually almost finished a row it's a knit row so here is I can't even show it you properly because I've, I've got stitches on here is castles in the air <laughs> And as you can see, it says a dream, a little dream with me. You can see the words. And so the motifs are coming out really well. There's a little bunny. Here's a dragon. Took me for it seemed like it took forever to get this dragon's face and top claw out and now I'm way over that so there's the dragon and I've just got a moss stitch border just to try and help it not to curl too much and I'm just keeping four stitches up the side moss stitch as well which stops it curling and then when when the when the blanket it is going to be a small blanket isn't it when it's finished I'll do something to give it a border which will hold it flat as well 
so it is a tad curly but not too bad and the more the heavier it gets the more I knit of it the better it's going to get so I will take a little clip of this and lay it, you know, lay it out, pin it out, so that you can see. I need to finish my, I need to sort my row out as well, because I'm, I've got two ravens sitting on this one, which is rather lovely. And there's the other bunny, and these here, um, not quite, not quite got to them yet. No, not quite got to them yet. But in the next couple of rows, I start the three legs of the, of the sort of Y shapes that the big castle sit in. So I'm getting there. I think I'm about maybe maybe not quite halfway up the bottom the bottom set of pages so it's going to be a big one um i'm still only about halfway through my first ball this is cheapy acrylic bought from turkey it's ice yarns it's called magic light it is what we call standard double knitting it's not fancy it's not expensive and it's very very pretty now a lot of people all around the world will go I can buy this in my local needlework, in my local shop, in my big box shop. Yes, you can. Ice makes yarn for everybody. They sell it under their own guys. But in, our, in, in the UK, you can buy this. It's Hayfield. Hayfield Bonus DK, it's called. And you can buy it in Hobbycraft. In this colourway, it's just a lot more money. So I, I, I bought it from Turkey. You do pay. The thing, the thing with ice yarns is um, that you buy it in packs so you buy four of these so you're buying 400 grams of it and that might only be six dollars but then you'll pay shipping the thing is you've got to look at the total price and decide whether it's worth it because the shipping is as much as the yarn which sound, always sounds so ridiculous that you're paying 28 dollars shipping but for the yarn you're only paying 28 dollars so between it and if you went if you went into an ordinary shop and bought it, it would be twice as much. So it's it's horses for courses, ice yarns. They're very good, they deliver very quickly. And the other yarn I'm using is this is a, a Rico Baby. Very, very midnight blue, glorious colour. One of my favourites. It's just a standard acrylic, it's absolutely lovely. It's got the it's got that lovely twist on it like some really nicely spun merinos have except this is acrylic and i'm an advocate for acrylic anything that's going to get washed anything for i've, I've had small children you know we have blankets we have jump jumpers my children have worn hand knitted jumpers beautiful hand knit yarn you know beautiful hand dyed expensive yarn it's all very well when it needs to go in the washing machine or the tumble dryer preferably both twice a week then acrylic rocks. I use both. Anyway, I will put a clip in of my of it all pinned out nicely. What else have I got to show you? So as far as haul went, it was my book. That was my haul, which was an ad hoc purchase. It really was. I also have arrived the pattern for my daughter's cape yes this is a costume pattern we are going to be adapting this purple cape we're going to be adapting it and I will be making a, a mock-up of the hood the cape obviously we're going to cut once but I needed the pattern so that I can get the right amount of fabric because I don't want to be buying at 17 pounds a meter I don't want to buy too much or too little so I've got the pattern we'll be making this purple cape we will be lining it with something really nice and we'll be making a mock-up of the the hood so that it's not costumey so that it fits like a like a sort of like a duffel coats hood rather than a, a dungeons and dragons costume and there'll be slits in it there's going to be pockets on the inside it's going to be a coat of you know a coat of wonder and she's also going to have the sleeves i've got the meter of um flannel now as well that we're going to make the yoke for the because i'm making a bolero to go under it so that she's got sleeves with cuffs probably with a line of buttons up the cuff you know it's going to be quite dramatic but i'm on i've got my pattern it's not open yet and 
the velvet samples we got were absolutely lovely. They're shedding on everything though, which is why there's floof on everything. And also on eBay, I snagged two. I snagged two patterns on eBay. This one here, this sh this type of dress fits my daughter's shape very very well. She's very busty. She's got quite a small waist in comparison to the size of her bust. So these dresses, she's got she's got a lovely um, velvet one that we got from. Um, Oh, I can't remember the name of the place, at Christmas, um, which is sort of 1950s. The Nipton waist, the full skirt, she looks great in it. So this is this is a 60s, this is um, circa 1963. So I think I just needed something to start with. I needed something to start with. So I got that one. And I also picked up a nice little wrap dress pattern, just because it's a really nice little pattern and I really like a little wrap dress. And I think that I think that would suit her too. We'd probably put little extra panels in the skirt just to make the skirt fuller, because she's she's looking at wearing dresses to university. That's the sort of aesthetic she's she's at at the moment. And I don't know if it's going to change very much. What are we? April, May, June, July, August, September. I've only got five months before my daughter goes to Cambridge. But oh, right, I must be nearly done because my boys have just woken up. God, they're lazy old dogs. That's them. It's quarter past nine and my boys, you'll hear them in a second. They're just doing the yawny whiny. That's them just getting up. Quarter past nine, lazy dogs. Anyway, a couple of little bits left to, sh left to say. Um, last week I offered up a pattern, um, an Emma Congdon Easter, uh, an, an em Emma Congdon chocolate pattern with a little Easter dingle dangle. I have, I actually put it on, you know, when I normally record, there's a colourful pouch on the, on the bed head behind me. Yeah, that's full of all my beads and findings. So I was looking everywhere for these guys, for the scissor fobs. They were in the zippy pouch behind my head. That's where they were, found them. So it is now got a couple of beads and a couple of little chippy things on it so that's now a little scissor fob and that is going to Sandra McDonald I'll put your name up here Sandra Ooh. <laughs> slightly different angle than normal and Sandra if you drop me a message you can ping me on Instagram you can send in, send me an email to the gmail account down below um, get a little message to me this and the Emma Congdon pattern are yours so if you get in touch with me that's great um, and this week I'm going to give away a couple of counting pins. Now I've said over and over and over again that my daughter made these little guys. Oh, he's fallen through. Let me show you these. Anyway, I have finally got my act together, put the holes in their bottoms. And that's, that is my, this is my tool Robin made for me. My um, counting pin drying rack so sorry about the boys as I say they're just up but I'm so nearly done so I've got these little these little pugs now yes these are counting pins but I think these are more pretty for pin cushions so we have a we have a whole this little little goldfish there as I say I am sorting myself out ready for quite a big Etsy shop update but it's not in there yet I will let you know when it's when it's good to go there's little cows so if you do a little pin cushion from the the cow all the lovely cow patterns the ink circles ones are pulling me fast I might have to get them but if you do a little pin cushion there's little cows who else have I got here I have a little unicorn Unicorn. That's rather cute. It's got a little unicorny tail. And I have I have two pugs in mugs. She's bear in mind these are made by my daughter. She's not 15. She's gonna be 14 until the middle of June. So these are her little thing. So I thought I would give away. What am I going to give away? I will give away a couple of counting pins and as a little pig 
and a little sheep with a little pink flower on the top of its head. So if you want to, if you want to be entered in to get these, um, just drop me a comment down below and um, either leave me a little a little emoji, a little sheep emoji, a little piggy emoji. Um, that's what we'll do. Right, so if you leave me a little comment, and it can just be the emoji, I don't mind. If you'd like to win, be in the dip to win these two little counting pins that my daughter's made. And the rest, that's about a quarter of what I've got. Oh look, there's definitely a hole in that. That one's the only one with a hole drilled right through. Let's pop that there instead. There we go. That's about a quarter of what, what she's made. So, um, I've started. I am trying hard. I'm hopeless and I'm going back to work tomorrow forever. So, little little emoji, a sheep or a pig. I don't mind whichever, as long as I can tell who wants to be entered and who doesn't. Um, I haven't ratched in the box for a pattern, so no pattern this week, just the two pins. Um, and I think that's me done. I will put in a clip of my long dog. I will put in the other picture I said I would. I'll have a look on the end. I think I've got a couple of little clips. It snowed yesterday. It was snowing so hard. I mean, it's it's April. It didn't stick, but it was it was snowing. I was like, what is going on? There was blue sky and it was snowing. I'm really sorry about Clay. I need to let him out. He needs to go to blue. Um, so guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope this weird lighting setup, I hope you've been able to see my stitching. I don't mind if I look washed out and I, all sorts of crap in the background and I had to block out the fish tank because it was really peculiar colour. It was just, it was catching the light and looking swimmy and weird and, you know, when, when you do look up, I don't want anyone to go, oh, that looks awful. Anyway, I will catch you soon, hopefully within the week and hopefully be, still be able to stitch even though I'm going to be a lot at work and I will see you soon I've got to go and let the dogs out I'm really sorry about the barking I will see you soon guys bye bye for now so here's my long dog the colour is really washed out dream a little dream with me it's really really washed out but I can just about get it in shot there we go. <laughs> I think it's brilliant. <laughs> I'm really enjoying it actually. So I'm back. <laughs> I'm back because whoa, I'm just trying to rest that where it was before. Mm, maybe, maybe not. Because I forgot to show you something that I was super proud of. I've just sat down on the sofa, I've let the dogs out, dogs have had their breakfast, they've all gone quiet now. Um lazy bums that they are they're so they're getting old you know they don't want to get up in the mornings now um i sat down to start editing my video and looked up and went i didn't show them i have an ffo i know because i never have ffos i didn't think to bring it to show you i finished finally there we go you can actually see in the in the reflection that my camera my phone is resting on my sewing machine I have put it behind glass because I live in the dustiest house in the world. I have finished shipping trees and it is in the frame that I bought for it and it fits. It fits in the frame I bought for it, which is really good. This frame was from the range. It was £6.99 and I think it's going to do the job admirably. Now, this is this is the look I had nearly finished. Oh, this is a bit difficult, isn't it? I had nearly finished the um, back stitch. So I just thought, get it done, get it done. And I simply, I took off the hanging, the hanging thing. And that is just a piece of, that's the actual backboard. I, I will put a piece of um, wrapping paper on the back just to seal it in. But that is just very roughly laced, like loosely laced with um, the extra strong thread that I use on my project bags. It's like the, uh, the top, top stitch denim colour. You can see it's not tight. It's not tight in there. I haven't pulled it to the point of the point of anything it's quite it's quite loosely done and it is in there because I had I had quite a bit of distortion up in this corner I had to do quite a bit of wriggling to try and get this corner to not be pointing but there is my shipping trees finish 
which I've totally forgot to show you. It is, sorry, it's very glary, but in my house, it needs to be behind glass. I can't believe I forgot to show you that one, but I'm very, very super pleased and happy to have finished it. That is a pattern from mybobbin.com. It is full coverage. Um, it was a PDF. It's, well, 10 shades of blue. Every colour's blue apart from the actual white that the stars are. Even these are shades of blue. Just just the stars were white and that was 3865. So it wasn't even white, white. It wasn't blanc. Um, and I stitched this on. You can see the holes in the fabric. I stitched this on 25 count Laguna, two over two. So it's 12 and a half count. So as a full coverage, it should have been about six inches square, which would have been very, very cute. But this was my easy evening stitching. When I came in tired, I could bang in a few stitches into this because the stitches are huge. But considering that's two strands, 12 and a half count, I think that coverage is going to be just fine. And I absolutely love it. And I'm so pleased I've got it finished. And I can't believe I forgot to show you it. Right, so I'll let you go and get on with your days. Hope everybody has a lovely, lovely Sunday. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.